Now, when I'm working a dog and when most trainers are working dogs, if they're decent trainers, they're going to look for that one intrinsic drive, that one thing that the dog really, really wants to do. Usually this is due to the predatory action sequence. Usually it's due to the selective drive behavior. Another post for a different day. So um, what ultimately we're talking about is a spaniel wanting to flush birds or a border collie wanting to chase sheep or a malinois wanting to bite. Now, when you have the dog and you have the dog and the dog wants to do those things, you can then use that to your advantage when you're training. It's a functional reinforcer. So what you can do is you can get the dog, for example, a spaniel to give you eye contact um, and you can teach the dog to give you eye contact on cue. Then you can take out amongst the birds get the eye contact send the bird on to, uh, the dog onto the birds um, as the ultimate reinforcer and the thing that's going to make that behavior really 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 strong and also it's going to really increase the dog's motivation and the desire to do it the anticipation will in turn re reinforce the behavior itself make the behavior reinforcing right and that's what we do that's what we do often when we're working dogs we look for that one thing and then we use it as a functional reinforcer now when you're working with a dog that relies on a drive now a drive will come at different times in a dog's life and it comes differently depending on what type of dog it is and in terms of what line of dog it is some drives don't really cut form until after adolescence and some of them form even later on in life depending on the individual depending on the line depending on the breed depending on all kinds of, kinds of things but ultimately uh, most dogs have some level of some drive to do something um, now when I'm talking about my Malinois my Malinois wants to bite I wanted to use that bite um, to reinforce him aha now this is where the problem comes in because what we can do as trainers and because we are humans and humans ultimately are complete 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 control freaks who want to control every aspect of every environment that their dog ever goes into is that we worry so much um, about the fact that that drive that one thing is usually also the catalyst to the main problem that, that type of dog or that individual dog is likely to have. For example, I might worry that Blake might start biting people or that the collie might chase sheep and get shot or that the um, spaniel might fuck off into the countryside and, and not come back because they're on a scent. And, um, and so because we worry so much about that, we want to control access to that thing as well. And what we can do is we can prevent access to it in a way or control access to it in such a way that actually stops that drive from really, really um, happening and from becoming really, really emphasised. Uh, and this is what I did with Blake. So I got Blake when he was a rescue, he was a rescue dog. So I didn't get him until he was about two years old. And I took him out into the field. And ultimately, I tried to control every access that he had to that biting behaviour. Um, uh, and so straight away, right from the word go, I'd be like, no, 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 I'm not going to let him off the lead to come and bite you um, because he's putting on my lead and because he's barking and because he's doing all this stuff. Now, what that did is that that reduced how much drive he had to do that behaviour. Um, it made it into not such a nice thing and it didn't allow it to develop naturally and organically into this amazing, amazing best thing in the whole wide world thing. Um, and so uh, I've had to backtrack massively from that uh, and actually do lots of long bites and lots of winning, 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 winning for him to develop that drive and to push it up to a point where he doesn't drop off the bite in uh, so that he can have a ball or, or so that the bite isn't no longer quite as decent and quite as good as it, it wants to be. Now, the other problem that happens often as a result of this um, is not a lack of drive for that particular ultimate thing, but actually too much because they start getting overzealous as and I'm not going to give you the bird back or you know I, I'm not going to come back to you because there's too much control of the access. The dog has to have ample access in order to increase that drive so that you can use it for your training. So don't be led into that really common, common mistake that I see all the time where we're over controlling the dog's access to that one thing that they want to do if we're then going to use it in training because actually we want that drive to build and build and build and build and build and build. Don't be a control freak. Bye.